We are not letting this slip away. Absolutely. This is the significant update that truly warms my heart. Following the SpaceX Falcon 9 booster B-1058 incident, which tipped over and lost a part in the depths of the ocean. Lost alongside the upper segment of B-1058 was a distinct unmistakable emblem marking its role in launching the first astronauts for NASA. It was the sole stage among SpaceX's fleet adorned with the space agency's iconic worm logo. The remaining section of B-1058 was transported to Port Canaveral aboard the drone ship Just Read the Instructions on Tuesday, December 26th. Most of the engine section of the rocket appeared to be intact, judging from photos, and three of the four landing legs jutted into the air, propped open as they were following the booster's landing. Looking from the top of the booster remnants, wires were drawn out and strewn over the edge of the drone ship, dragging in the water as the the vessel made it back to its dock. Now, while B-1058 will never fly again, SpaceX fully intends to preserve what's left and understand what they can. We are planning to salvage the engines and do life leader inspections on the remaining hardware, said John Edwards, the VP of Launch Vehicles and Falcon 9 Product Director at SpaceX. There's still quite a bit of value in this booster. We will not let it go to waste. Previously, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk had boldly declared, The future is bright. Following the loss of 1058, SpaceX is reported to possess 16 flight-proven operational Falcon 9 first stages, while three others are yet to embark on their maiden voyages. At the forefront of the current fleet are three boosters, B-1060, 61, and 62, each having accomplished 17 missions. B-1060 in September, with the others achieving their milestone in the recent past. Following closely are two others with 15 flights to their credit, along with three more that have already surpassed the 10 mission mark. Additionally, a dozen others comprising single-stick Falcon 9s or Falcon Heavy side boosters await either their subsequent flights or the launch of their inaugural missions in the imminent days and weeks. The company stated that newer Falcon boosters have upgraded landing legs with the capability to self-level and mitigate this type of issue. In a separate post, Kiko Donchev, the vice president of launch for SpaceX, elaborated by adding that while they mostly outfitted the rest of the operational Falcon booster fleet, B-1058 was left as it was given its age. The rocket met its fate when it hit intense wind and waves resulting in failure of a partially secured octo-grabber less than 100 miles from home. We came up with self-leveling legs that immediately equalized leg loads on landing after experiencing a severe tippy booster two years ago on Christmas, Donchev wrote, referring to the first flight of the B-1069 booster. One thing is for sure, we will make lemonade out of lemons and learn as much as possible from historic 1058 on our path to aircraft-like operations, he added. To date, SpaceX has retired four of its earlier flown Falcon 9 stages for public display. B-1019, the first to return to its launch site for a successful landing, today stands outside the company's headquarters in Hawthorne, California. B-1035, which launched two Dragon cargo missions to the International Space Station, is now exhibited on its side at Space Center Houston in Texas. B-1023, which helped launch Musk's Tesla Roadster into space as a side booster on the first Falcon Heavy rocket launch, is now a part of the Gate way the Deep Space Launch Complex attraction at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex in Florida, and B-1021, the first booster to be reflown and the first to land on a drone ship, was just recently installed outside Dish Network's headquarters in Littleton, Colorado. B-1058, considering its involvement in DM-2, would have stood shoulder to shoulder with these other boosters in terms of historical significance. Presumably, it might have been a worthy addition to the National Air and Space Museum's collection. 
Yet as much as viewing rockets in museums is captivating, that's not their primary purpose. Rockets are mechanical wonders crafted to transcend Earth's gravitational pull. Their rightful place is in the skies, achieving what they were meticulously designed for until their missions are complete. SpaceX, by pushing booster reuse to its limits, considered rockets like B-1058 invaluable for gathering crucial flight data. As a private company, SpaceX has the liberty to choose how it utilizes its rockets. If a rocket and its engines can serve another mission, that's the very essence of their existence, reuse. Whether they meet their end at the ocean floor or in a spectacular blaze, witnessing the departure of B-1058 is saddening. Nonetheless, the 19 remarkable flights it completed validated its sacrificial role in SpaceX's mission. Next up, SpaceX Chief Executive Musk again appeared to rule out any near-term plans for spinning out his company's Starlink broadband satellite business and taking it public. Speaking in a December 21st audio session on X, Musk argued that it did not make sense to take Starlink public and that he had no difficulties raising money for it privately. In fact, Musk has said for several years that he had no immediate plans for spinning off Starlink and conducting an initial public offering, or an IPO, of shares to raise money. That included a comment in a 2020 talk where he said he was thinking about that zero when asked about a Starlink IPO. However, he was more circumspect about a Starlink IPO in an online interview in June. It would not be legal for me to speculate about a Starlink IPO. It's, it's, I think, against regulations to um, uh, talk with any kind of specifics about a future uh, public offering. That interview came after a report that a Starlink spinoff and IPO could take place by the end of the year. His comments added to speculation that a Starlink IPO could happen sooner rather than later. However, in the most recent discussion on X with investor Kathy Wood, Musk suggested that there were no plans to take SpaceX itself or the Starlink business unit public for the foreseeable future. I don't think it's worth going public until you have maybe an extremely stable and predictable revenue stream. So if your cash flows are extremely stable and predictable, um, at that point, going public is less of an issue. SpaceX is still building out the Starlink constellation with more than 5,200 satellites in orbit. The company recently reported having more than 2.3 million Starlink users. 2.3 million Starlink users, although it was not clear if all were subscribers, and is now available in 70 countries. Musk wrote on X on November 2nd that Starlink had achieved break-even cash flow but did not provide additional financial details. Musk did say he expected to have to have no problems continuing to raise money for his ventures, including SpaceX, on private markets. I, I can equity or debt fund just about anything um, at this point, you know. It's basically very easy for me to raise uh, almost any amount of capital, frankly. He contrasted privately held SpaceX with publicly traded Tesla and how the companies do long-term planning. Uh, absolutely. I mean, at, at SpaceX, we never think about um, how, what, the, the quarter. We never think about it, mm -hmm. and we don't think we don't think about the stock price. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there's um, there's a lot of pressure, like an immense pressure, on a public company to not have a bad quarter. So this can actually result in a less efficient operation, where you're you're, you're going to great lengths at the end of a quarter to not disappoint people, um, and. Um, you know, that's just, that's just how, how, how it goes. A key factor motivating SpaceX's development of Starlink is a desire to generate large amounts of cash that can go towards the company's and Musk's long-term vision of human settlement on Mars. An icon used by Starlink on social media as well as on its consumer equipment shows a home man transfer orbit between the Earth and Mars. I think Starlink is enough. For those plans, he said. When asked if SpaceX also needed additional markets, like proposals for using its Starship vehicle for high-speed point-to-point -point travel to generate sufficient revenue. Starlink is the means by which 
life becomes multi-planetary. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up, and Happy New Year!